do this. I can do this. Just, just close your eyes, okay? If I do, it'll start again. You need to go somewhere else in your mind, somewhere that makes you feel relaxed. <sighs> paper yes yeah Greenlee has got Jackson now to help her well, I hope you're not hungry wow you know I don't I don't I don't think I've ever seen an omelet look like that before uh, I was trying to make up for the chicken well this this is definitely not as burnt as the chicken was so guess it's on to the slow cooker then I got one when I got the omelet pan but it's so much easier you just dump in all the ingredients push a button and Dinner when you get home. Wow, look at that, huh? Sounds like magic. Mm, except when I push the button. It's burnt magic. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> come here, I love it. Hey, I'm really sorry that we're not doing this in the Mediterranean. You know, I, I am. But, but you know, you here with me, with burnt eggs, that's all I need. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah? Good. Because I got something for you. Oh, come here. Even after I've ruined your omelet? Yes. It's not ruining an omelet, really. Just open it. <laughs> oh, good morning, and come right in. It's going to be an excellent morning, Caleb, because I think I have the first step to getting Cortland back from the Chandlers. Well. I'm all ears. Well, I was up most of the night. I was thinking about what you said. About Scott stealing from a dead man. And if that's true, well, I just kept coming back to the same, same thought, the only one that makes sense. Palmer. What's going on? Does it matter? Well, when you're sleeping in the guest room and your room looks like this and you look like that, yeah, it does matter. Oh. Come on, Scott, just talk to me, okay? Just tell me what happened. <clears throat> Annie and JR. Again? In your bed. Scott, call me back. We need to talk. Stay away from me. I want to help. <laughs> the hell you do. Me? Destroyed? This is what you wanted all along. No. No, it's not, Annie. You know, I, I finally just tried to make the right decisions in my life. I tried to just do the right thing. I, I tried to just be the mother that my, my daughter can be proud of. And I was so close and I was so happy and then one stupid moment and it's gone the life that I wanted to give Emma it's over I have ruined my daughter's life so you tell me you tell me how I'm gonna live with that
You're a good mom. Emma will be all right. You're not alone. Shut up, shut up. Shut up. Oh, God, I wish I could just go back to yesterday morning. Scott loved me. And Emma thought that I was a princess, and we were so happy. Oh, God. Why didn't I just keep running last night? Why did I let you bring me back to this house? You were almost struck by lightning, Annie. Would that have been worse? You set me up, and I fell for it. You do know it's insane, right? What goes on between us? It's not making love. It's weakness. It's, it's, it's betrayal. It's so well, wrong. You were in pain, so I reached out the to you. Well, congratulations, tough guy. You won. How does it feel? How you feel? Like a strong, powerful man now? You are twisting this into something that it's not. You know, I finally get it. I finally get how stupid I've been. This whole time, I thought that it was about me. It was never about me. This was about Adam. This was about Scott. No, no yes, it's not. Yes, you wanted me because I was married to your father. You wanted me because I'm married to your cousin, not because you ever really cared about me. Tell me honestly. You want the absolute truth. You want the brutal truth. And take a look in that mirror, Annie. And you see what I've seen all along. You don't love Scott. I'm really sorry, Scott. Are you? Yes. I know how much you loved her yeah. and that you wanted to make this marriage work. This is my marriage. Do you see anything left worth saving? I wanted to move Annie out of this house into our own home. And she wanted to wait, so I said, yeah, sure, whatever you want. She wanted to throw this party. I said, okay. I agreed company needs me in Europe, so I went. That's what I do. Yeah, because you're a good guy. You're generous and you're kind. You're... You're like Uncle Stuart. And I love you for that. Or maybe I'm just weak. When it comes to Anne. No, no. No, you are not weak. You are one of the strongest people that I know. But it's time I stopped reacting and started taking action. Look, uh, Scott, this may not be much of a help, but at least you're free to find someone who really deserves you. And I know that it kills right now, but it's better that it happened now than months or years later. I mean, what if you guys had had a baby to get? I'm really sorry. That was really stupid. I'm just going to shut up. And I'm going to give you a hug, okay? Do you Listen, um, Scott, is there anything else I can do for you? No. I gotta get out of here. Um, I think, uh, JR and Annie, they're downstairs. So what, I'm supposed to just run and hide from them? No, I just don't think it's a good idea that you see them right now. So if my hunch is right and Scott stole something from Palmer, then all we have to do is figure out what. They're not just going to roll over and give it up. Well, if you think going over there and blowing down their door and attacking them is going to work, you're wrong. All right, so what do you suggest? Annie. She's the woman in the middle, and she's an emotional mess. The one who stabbed you? Yes, but I can use that. I can get her to talk to me. I can get her to open up. Well, if you meet with her, you better be sure there's no sharp objects around. She doesn't scare me. She's desperate. She needs someone on her side. You. The woman she stabbed. Well, why not? I mean it, Caleb. If, if Annie knows what, what Scott stole, then I will get it out of her. How could I ever doubt you? I guess you have learned something since I was gone. It's about finesse and subtlety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A woman's touch. 
You know, while you were up on that mountain all those years, women did actually make great strides. Hey, I wasn't up there for 50 years. Well, you were up there long enough. And I know I may not fit the stereotype of a feminist, but I know that I made my way, and, and I know what I've accomplished, and I know how hard it was to get there. Dorothy, you have done more in one lifetime than any woman, or man for that matter, that I have ever met. It's a key to here. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the slow cooker, maybe it needs to be on all day, right? You have to come in in the middle of the day and stir the pot. Well, if you're worried about me burning the place down, the cooker has a timer. It turns itself off automatically. I didn't give you the key because I'm worried about you burning the place down. So, you're cool with me burning dinner and breakfast and lunch <laughs> and all that around here on a more regular basis? Yeah, well, you know, it's been an adventure so far. You are a brave man. I mean, but this is big. Are you sure? I won't have an excuse to flirt with your super anymore. I want you to be comfortable here. I want you to feel like it's your home. Just come in whenever you want. You know, let's say, let's say I'm working late, and you just want to come over and relax and make yourself comfortable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Thanks. Oh, for the coffee and for the change of clothes and for getting a new bail hearing. Yeah. Flight risks don't usually get a second chance. Well, first of all, you're not much of a flight risk. And it doesn't hurt that I've known this judge for years and years and years and that she was open to rehearing your bail request. Well, no matter who the judge is, I have complete confidence in my lawyer. Thank you very much. Would you have a seat? Look, I know how you are in small spaces. How are you holding up here? I have, um, techniques for coping. Okay. <laughs> well, if things go our way, and I have no reason to believe they won't, you'll be out of here this morning. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't shown up. Be very clear about this. I meant what I said yesterday. I apologize for turning my back on you, and I am here to stay until we take care of this. So, let's get you to this hearing, huh? Officer, 